they put in a new AV system, and I'm not smarter than the AV system. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead. If you, do you need a packet or a Scantron? OK, raise your hand if you do. OK, little group over here that still needs it. All right, we're getting there. Well, welcome back uh, to Purdue and to Epix. We are really excited about the semester. Um, we have, as of this morning or right before I came over, 477 students registered for EPICS. That is an all-time high for us. Our previous high had been 412 students. So we're over 50 more than that. So we're really excited, but as you can see, we're having a little bit of kind of growing pains or you know, having so many people um, on teams and in, in epics. So um, one of the cool things, we're estimating, best on, based on what is in my epics, about two-thirds of you are returning. So that should make for really productive semesters on your team, so we're really excited. Um, I just, there's not a whole lot to cover. We didn't change a whole lot of things from last semester to this semester, but there are a few things, and we're going to talk about that, and some um, changes that we're hoping to make today. And so this is what this lecture will be about. So one of the things, not a lot of changes to the course deliverables, and hopefully, now that you're back in EPICS and you've been through one semester and kind of familiar to, with uh, what we are, our words, our language, these things will all make sense. But the course deliverables, basically the same as last semester. One of the things that is different, all of you have a model release form that we're asking you to sign in if you had signed it last semester. Part of it is just we scan them and post them, but since they're not text, um, it's really difficult to find a form if we need to find a form. So we're going to move to an online system, but until then, if you don't mind signing the yellow form again this, um, this week, we would appreciate it. So everybody in EPICS, we're asking to do the yellow model release form that says if we have a picture of you, can we use it or put it on the website? Okay, it's what that is based on. New students on your teams will um, need to do the lab safety form. You will not need to do that again if you did that last semester. That's a little easier for us to track. But we're actually going to just try and get all those on, all online so we don't have to deal with the paper forms anymore anyway. Um, one of the other things is that we're having everybody do the ethics survey and have an ethics discussion in lab on like what ethical issues your team might be facing. For new students, it's homework. So if you were new to ethics last semester, you had to do the ethics survey prior to going to the ethics lecture. Um, this semester, as a returning student, you'll just get a lecture credit for completing that. Okay? So at least that's one less lecture you need to have to go to as a returning student. It will still be homework for new students in, in EPICS. And we'll do that week six, the same time that the new students are doing that prior to the um, ethics um, lecture for that. Okay? Um, one other change, and this is what we try to do, is that design reviews will be week 14. That will give you week 15 to do the final documentation, the individual evaluation rubric, the, all the other stuff at the end of the semester. We didn't do it in the fall because week 14 in the fall is right after Thanksgiving, so it's really difficult to prepare. But actually in the spring, we don't have that issue. And especially, it's really important, there's a lot, as you know, of returners from fall to spring but um, not as many from fall to the next, uh, spring to the next fall. So transition is even more important uh, for those semesters. So that will give you a chance to really be able to do that. You'll still have lab week 15, 
but it'll be more of a um, transition, closing, you know, culminating kind of lecture with, with that. Otherwise, really things are the same. I don't know if it made sense before, but if you really wanted to plan out what's going on for the semester, you can take a look at this and actually get it in your mortarboards or your schedulers or whatever you're doing to be able to know when things are happening. For those of you who have leadership roles, you can take a look at this and anticipate when things are due and prepare your team to actually um, be able to know when all the things are due, okay? Team things are in yellow. The purple is the individual items that are due. Any questions on this? The milestone schedule, and all of this stuff is in your packet. So it's got the traditional syllabus at the front, but then this course deliverable is here. So if you have questions, it's online too, but you do have a paper copy. The milestones, and again, the point of the milestone is to talk about why, what's the objective in each of these items that, we, that you do throughout the semester. We critically review things on a regular basis. And if it doesn't serve a purpose, we don't want you doing it. It needs to have a purpose for doing that. The milestone schedule will talk about what that purpose is, what we're trying to achieve. Often we suggest a way to be able to achieve it. There may be other ways that your team decides to do something, uses a slightly different format or a form. Those things are okay. Just need to, um, what we really want to do is know that we're meeting the objective on that. Okay, any questions on the schedule? So it should be pretty familiar related to that. Just some updates about the lab. So one of the things we realized, actually it was an exercise we did this summer. We tried as part of, so Camp Riley, a lot of the kids that we designed for and with use wheelchairs. So one of the activities we tried to do, which felt like a simulation of it today, was take a wheelchair and use it to get from Armstrong to this classroom. One of the things we realized, we couldn't even get out of the lab using because we didn't have an automatic door opener. It was really, really difficult to do that. So we decided we needed to have Epics be accessible. And so over break, we installed um, automatic door openers and a new card access system that should work a lot more reliably than the other one. Um, it will use the same building system um, that Andrew will maintain, so um, it should be easier and you won't see him walking around with the laptop trying to reprogram um, the locks. It'll be wireless or, or through the, um, the building system to be able to do that. So if there's issues with us, let us know, but we're excited that it's um, the main doors where the card access system is in the main lab, 1101 and the software lab all have uh, door access to that. The other thing we're really excited about is we have a new 3D printer um, and our UGTAs, which a couple of them are here, um, will be helping to um, maintain that. So we're creating an email address for them that if you have anything that you want 3D printed, that you can send them um, the file and that they'll um, spool it up and do the printing and manage that. For now, it's not going to cost anything. Um, we'll see how things go and if uh, it ends up one team's using tons and tons, we may have to start charging a little bit of materials. But generally right now, we're really excited about having that opportunity um, in Epics um, so you don't have to go elsewhere and or um, try to utilize the ones that are downstairs that haven't been working. The TAs, all of our TAs are returning, which has been fantastic. Um, and they've been already developing more online resources uh, for the teams. So if you go to the website, you can see, or SharePoint, um, more resources for the frequently asked questions. They've been working on that. 
We're trying to provide more examples of good documentation, both individual and team, because we know that that's an important part. Um, if you can see an example of good documentation, then you know what you need to strive for for that. Um, I think the team e emails, I indicated in the weekly email that they weren't working. I think they got updated, um, and that seems to be working, even the brand new teams uh, for that. So just make you aware of that. Okay. So last semester, we implemented the new roles, the project manager, and also design leads, um, and had project archivists. So what I wanted to know from you guys, and I want you to get into small groups, how did this work on your team? What worked well? What would you want to change? And what is needed to make this more effective? So gather three to five people real quick. Just quickly talk about what you did on your teams and how it's going to work. Oh, okay. Am I in the wrong lecture? No, you're in the right lecture. Okay. Um, I also came a few minutes late from I was walking in the class. So, what am I filling in here? This is the Scantron for okay. your attendance. So, what? Oh, it was your name. Oh, okay. Yeah, just your name, cool. and you, you'll do true for number one. Um, I can't get it to work. So, if you can help me figure out how to work, and it plugged in. Yes. I don't know which one of those. I mean, this looks like audio control. I think that is only for the system. That's what I thought. But then, is there one over here? I think those are the lights. No, that's the alert system. I don't think it's Blu-ray audio, is it? I don't think you're hearing it. Okay. Yeah, I can't figure it out. I don't think that'll work, but it's not working. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So how many, sorry. <laughs> All right. How many teams, I know my voice is not going to make it. How many teams did, had project managers roles on their teams? OK. How did it work? Anybody want to comment on good? Yeah, good. Yes, good. Um, were there any teams where maybe it didn't work as well? What would you need um, to be successful? What worked well about it? We had a project manager who was very well prepared, um, usually for lab, and then as the, I think as the semester progressed, and the workload of the project manager kind of dis, they kind of disseminated to the pro, to the design leads more okay. than the project manager themselves. They didn't really have an active role in any project except the one that they were actually working on physically. Okay. So I felt like they, they had less of a authoritative presence in the team and more kind of a facilitative presence that kind of was underneath what the design leads were doing. Okay. Anybody else kind of experiences with this? Um, were the project managers, did it help keep your projects on kind of time, on yes. schedule? Yes. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, because that was the whole goal of, of starting 
this new role or framing it in that new way is that we would be able to keep the projects on task and actually get to delivery. Um, I mean, that's been a problem. Some of these projects have gone on semesters in a few years. And so it was really important to be really aware. It's how industry is set up. There's project managers who help manage the timeline for the team. One of the things we are going to do to see if this can help um, a little bit, one of our project managers is um, going to facilitate some meetings. And we're also going to develop a few extra skills like how to use Microsoft Project and some different aspects of that that can be very useful in keeping projects um, on schedule and on budget. Okay, So if you're a project manager or team leader, either one of those roles um, on your team, we're going to have a meeting in two weeks. And then she's going to help facilitate um, some of the ongoing meetings that we're going to have. So, all right. Any questions on that? And we also have those other, um, within those skill sessions, we're going to do some of that other skill development. Just an update as far as budgets. If your team turned in a budget last semester um, and you're still, it's still applicable, you do not need to turn in a new budget uh, for this year. Okay, it was an annual budget. If your needs have changed, um, you can go ahead and submit an updated budget. Or if you have a brand new team and you're going to spend more than $200. Uh, the service learning grants information has been posted already. And so if your team is eligible for that, I recommend that you apply. We have had between sixteen dollars and $20,000 from those provost grants to be able to support some of the projects. One of the things, though, is you have to have an external customer. So for example, um, AAEE, if they're working with Purdue Space Day, they, still con they consider that an internal customer, even though those Purdue Space Day brings in 600 kids. And so those teams aren't eligible. But if you have an external partner, um, we really recommend this really helps us out a lot in being able to um, meet the needs of all the budgets that we have. Um, it is an online um, application process now. And so you can submit that all online. Just make sure you give us a copy. Any questions about this? So thanks to the teams who have done this in the past. and. Um, really recommend people do it in the future. It, yeah. it, sometimes it's kind of difficult to get the applications actually in a printable form. Okay. The online application is great, but when you, there's supposed to be a PDF generating part of it that often doesn't work on some or all browsers okay. for, for different things. I had a lot of problems with it last year. Okay. Even if you can print some aspect of it so we have a record of what's been submitted, because then we know to look for the money and, um, you know, when it comes in. There's and also no way to save them once you do them. You have to oh, do yeah. them all together and then you have to submit it and that way you have some save your information. Okay. So if you do it online, <laughs> it doesn't have a save feature. You need to complete it all at one time. Okay. So one of the things we noticed as far as um, one of the way that SharePoint is organized or disorganized for many of the teams. And so we wanted to propose a new organization, or this is actually just a modification of what's been done in the past. This is actually, um, so what are your thoughts on kind of a, a, this kind of organization structure? Do you think it would work? Concerns? The idea, so I'm an expert in a few things. One of them would be, or at least experienced, hunting for files on SharePoint. I've had to do it. And one of the things that I think is really useful is that if you organize it by project and have a design document kind of at that high level, so if you're on a team, 
glass, one of your team projects is IPAC. When you go to the IPAC folder, the current design document is right there at the top so that you can find it and everybody else can find it. And not hidden in a semester folder somewhere. Because if, you, if it's organized by semesters, you don't always know what semester it's in, and so you have to go through many different semesters to be able to do that. One of the other underutilized um, aspects of SharePoint is the revision control. So you can take a document, check it out, edit it, check it back in, and you don't have to create version 1, 2, 3, 4, or even fall 2014 or, and then spring 2015. You can just call it design document, IPAC design document, check it out, edit it, check it back in. And it's the most current. If you would ever need to go back to a previous version, you can do that on SharePoint. Thoughts? Yep. The only time I suggest anyone use IE is for SharePoint because it's a Microsoft thing. Yep. You can't check out documents to actually work on them in Word or some other Microsoft version if you're in a different browser than IE. So it's actually very convenient because it does the checkout and check-in process right. without you having to download and re-upload everything. Yep. So using IE, IE plays a lot better with SharePoint. The other thing is you can go into Explorer View. How many people know about Explorer View on SharePoint? So if you're using IV, IE to interface with SharePoint, you can go into Explorer View, and then you can move files around just like you can drag and drop and copy. OK? If you want to use something like Google Docs while your team is working on it, you can do that. But it needs to be on SharePoint when you're done. Too often, and it already happened this semester, people did that, and the people who returned the passwords left with the people who left Epics or graduated. So we have that issue. So if you use, I know Google Docs is really easy for kind of when you're doing the, the editing together and collaborating. But one of the things, though, is it's really important that we actually get it on SharePoint because that's what persists beyond that. We're going to talk about this more project manager this meeting. This is what um, the TAs help come up with this. So just to think about how to make it easier to find stuff on SharePoint. Because a lot of information and less knowledge is lost because you just don't know it's there or you don't know where to find it on SharePoint. OK. Um, just wanted, this was something we talked about last semester. Um, I think a lot of teams use PIGs. Progress issues goals uh, to report status updates. Um, just to think about again how to make this effective so that you can get the feedback you need and the help you need on your project and also to keep you on track. So one of my teams um, included the Gantt chart with present uh, completion as part of PIGS to show that and that was a very visible way of knowing whether or not um, your team was meeting the goals and where you were in meeting those goals. Okay. Recommend you have a PowerPoint deck maybe for that team and you just keep adding. And then that way you can take your goals from one week and use those as the starting point for the progress you made the next week. One of the things else that we've been working on is organizing and really developing the skill sessions so that there are skill session tracks. So that there are more skill sessions that go deeper into the different topics and often culminate in some kind of activity, like for example for Arduino, uh, culminating in the hackathon. So we identified these really specific areas um, we took the feedback that you gave at the end uh, on your TA evaluations. One of the things that I was really interested in seeing that a lot of people had commented on the need for skill sessions on presentation 
and technical writing. So we're going to be adding those as well. So we're working on building that schedule and making more explicit tracks so that you know what prerequisite material. For those of you who have been in EPICS before, so that you have some opportunities to go dig deeper into that and then have that experience of either um, building that 3D um, device or, as I said, doing something like um, the hackathon. The two that are scheduled for next week are woodworking, the initial, and um, C. So those will be in my epics very soon. And as I said, we're going to be implementing that whole schedule uh, throughout the semester. The other thing that we're trying to do is get many of the key elements online. So if you just needed to see kind of our epics YouTube videos of how you do different things, and um, so that they're available. So if you can't make it to a specific skill session or you realize later in the semester you need some information, that you can actually access that. So many of these things we're going to be videotaping and putting together for that. Really recommend that you think about and plan what you need for the semester and help those new students on your team plan as well. So that's one of the things as far as really thinking explicitly about what you will need for your, your project and your team and, and really kind of take ownership and I mean this is an opportunity not very often do you get to kind of have control over what you're going to learn or what other skills you want to be able to develop. This is one of those opportunities and recommend that you try and take advantage of it. So, um, Going to be doing the leadership track. This is especially attractive to returning students um, because it's four lectures. There is some outside work. Um, most of the people that have participated in the leadership workshop have found it beneficial in helping to think about how the, um, increasing their leadership skills on their team and in other, um, um, in other activities as well. I'm going to do it both at 4.30 and 5.30. We have so many returning students. We should be able to fill both sessions, 4.30 and 5.30, um, this next semester if you're interested in per participating. So those will be in my epics. You have to go to all four lectures um, to get credit, but then you get eight credits for doing that. So especially for you two credit hour students, you come here, you do the ethics survey, you do these four, that's your lecture requirement, okay? It's a nice pathway for that. Uh, special note, since we are videotaping this 4.30 lecture, um, for those of you who uh, are watching the video or normally scheduled for the 5.30, this is the only week that the 5.30 lecture will meet. Um, the next several weeks, we will have lecture at 4.30, we will videotape it, and it will be available. So if you or someone on your team is registered for 5.30, what they need to do is watch the videos online. We usually have them posted by Wednesday afternoon, um, where if something would come up, you have an interview, you can't come to lecture, you can just watch the lecture online um, for that. However, you have two weeks to make up the lecture. So not, do not want you waiting till the last week of the semester and having a marathon session with EPICS lectures. Not exactly, you know, the shows that you really want to be doing that with, okay? I know there's lots of other ones. So, um, yeah, the marathon thing, yeah, no. That's not what we want because at that point, it's not going to be very useful. So the lecture schedule is in the, your packet as well. You can take a look at the other professional development lectures that are available uh, for you. The new students will go through that introductory lecture, that five lecture series. But for you guys, you have the opportunity to do either the lectures, skill sessions, 
or like the leadership track, some of these other, okay? So, all right. In your packet, um, you have a pink sheet. Why don't you pull that out and take a look at that for a second? What do you think is the number one complaint from advisors or TAs? Yeah. What's most of your feedback? You're doing a good job on the project, but what? Your documentation, right? So we decided usually we give this just to the new students in their notebooks. But we thought it was a good opportunity to remind everybody what should be included in good individual documentation. So if you have a question, and that's been a concern for you, or feedback that you've received, um, feel free to talk to your TAs or advisors. Find somebody who does good documentation if you need to see an example. Um, really, it's more why you you know, it's not just throwing that circuit in there, it's figuring out why is this important, not just putting in a link to a website that you visited, but why is that information important and how does it inform your project. You can write the questions that you have thinking about before you go visit your project partner. What were their answers and how does that inform your project? So that really needs to provide more of that insight to those aspects of the design. So if you want to look at it, there's also some recommendations for some formatting, page numbers, tables of contents, and things like that. So any questions about the documentation? But just wanted to remind you. OK. So before your next lab meeting, your homework is to find your old notebook, I think, most of them should be back in the lab by the time I'm done with lecture today. Um, we had a few TAs still working on getting those back there. Um, but I think they should be there. Definitely before you walk into your lab, you want to have your notebook. So go find it and don't sit through the first lab without your notebook. And then um, review the prior semester's documentation. It's amazing what you might forget over a break. Um, and then, for those of you who have leadership roles, want to prepare the agenda, the blue sheet that you have can actually help also are some things to think about. One of the things about EPICS is that as a returning student, you already are a leader. You already have information and knowledge about EPICS that other people who are new to the team do not have. So it's important that you share that and recognize the opportunity you have to be a leader, whether it's in a formal role or informal role. So um, you know, you're going to want to make sure all the new people are introduced to your projects and people get assigned to teams. So if you haven't, if you are kind of a project manager or team leader, haven't already uh, prepared for the semester, need to do that. If you identify that your team needs training, uh, specific training that we're not already addressing, please let us know and we can get that set up. All right. Um, just a little bit as a reminder about emergency procedures. As far as, you know, basic, if there's an emergency, call 911. This applies whether we're in here or in lab. And so um, also, if you're not already getting the text, recommend that. There's also a lot of emergency um, telephones. There's also these alert systems in here. Um, depending if there's a fire alarm, we will immediately leave the building. Um, and then if it's shelter in place, um, we will suspend class and go to the lowest level, away from windows and doors, if it's a tornado. Um, but if it's for another reason, um, we will stay in this room. I don't know. Can you guys check in the back? Are these doors lockable here? Okay. All right. 
So we have the ability to do that as well. Um, we have some other information. Basically, check the website or emails related to that. The evacuation location, just can you, if you can just be quiet just for a couple more minutes, because I just really don't have the voice to yell over. The evacuation location meeting point is between Armstrong and Push along that mall area. Even if something should occur here, I want to meet in that location. That's always where we're going to go. That's the location for when we're in arms. We're really not in physics very often, just these few lectures. So I want to have a common place that we go if you're in this class and some, there is some reason. Please, if there is a reason why we need to evacuate, please come to the checkpoint so that we can make, every, make sure everybody's accounted for. This is particularly important if we're in Armstrong should anything happen, okay? All right, reminder for 5.30 lecture and Let's see, parting words for today. If you have some friends, you, they probably can join. I think we might be almost at the 500 point, but we are pretty full. Um, so we'll have to see if there's room for our many, on uh, many of the teams. Um, just sit for one second. And then, everybody, we've got people in place to collect it. For your Scantron, if you're not already familiar with what you do, put your name and your 10-digit Purdue ID and true for number one, all right? So please turn in your forms to the TAs at the doors. Have a great semester.